Well, good morning to all of you. Wherever you're watching us from, we're grateful that you join us this morning. Please make sure you get interactive. Join our stream. Go search for us, TV3 Ghana, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. We're streaming the live. Always add the hashtag TV3 New Day. Let us know also what you're, uh, you're saying or thinking about uh, subjects of discussion this morning. And this morning we'll be talking about the Domahini now wading in into this whole conversation about whether the Attorney General of the state um, should, you know, file a nolly prosequa in that uh, criminal trial of the MP elect of Asinov, Jechikwesen. And, well, if he decides to continue, what, what really is... Um, the intent in itself or the end game but what really also is the implication for those constituents who have just elected their new member of parliament in james jichi quason and um we do encourage you as you get interactive also uh, as we always do to make mention of some of you who have joined us on our stream to make sure that we have some great live interaction for many of the related subjects that we want to talk about. I would want to make an acknowledgement of a number of you. And um, uh, Carl Need Domingo, you live in Charlotte in the United States of America. I want to say uh, good morning to you and thank you for always uh, being a good friend alongside your wife, um, Angela, and the rest of the family. I'm always grateful. Adams Rashid Dangobe, uh, you've joined us this morning. We're grateful. Prince Henry in Kofodria, uh, you've joined us. Ahmed Saeed, you've joined us. Good morning to you. Solly uh, Evans, all over, all over, <laughs> over the weekend. I was chasing you around on many of the streams across the, the, the country on Saturday morning. And many of you were teasing me as well. Thank you for joining us as well. Uh, Kai Edward, uh, money, ni money, great guy. And then also Mutawakilu, Nyama, Gomena, uh, Leroy, uh, Suleimana, uh, Swal Swalihu. Thank you for joining us as well. Uh, Allah, Bilba, Adele, Win, Barnabas. Thank you. And then also a number of you, Paula Pam. I can't mention all of you, but as and when uh, we're having the discussions, we'll do so. But uh, uh, as we do that, let me just introduce our guest for the morning. I have uh, here with me um, Isaac J. Hyde. Um, he's here representing the government of um, Danado Danque Kufado and also the ruling New Patriotic Party. He was also a former uh, NUCS president, uh, distinguished himself in that role as well. And I've known him uh, the last couple of years, uh, not only for... Uh, student politics, but also advocacy for young people and growth and transformational leadership. Isaac J. Hyde, thank you for joining me this morning. I'm thank grateful. you very much, Roland. Well, you great. forgot to add that I'm currently the Deputy National Youth Organizer of the NPP. Okay, let me just add that. Uh, I left my pen. You say you are the Deputy National Youth Organizer? Yes, please, of the, okay. uh, of the NPP. Deputy National Youth Organizer. MPP, okay. I apologize for oh, no um, giving you a wrong designation, Isaac J. Hyde. And then also a former Minister of Health, um, also the chair for the UK Ireland chapter of um, the NDC. Uh, currently, what position do you hold, uh, Ms. Alice Egbefia, within the NDC? I was the former chair yes, for that some time, but I'm now the director of international relations. Yes, of course. For the NDC. Uh, director of international relations for the NDC as well. And, and thank you for joining us. He's also you. a legal practitioner. Morning to you. Helps. Morning to my colleague and to all the viewers. All right. And so please make sure that you send us your message um, about the Domahini wedding to all this uh, call for the Attorney General to perhaps um, uh, discontinue his interest in that criminal trial of the MP elect for Asinov. But first, let me just go to him. He has an insight, many will say very controversial, but it depends on which side of the political divide you are. And this is what he said. <laughs> Come in for right. Na nemti anka makwa no. Wan hwe no na bade bade saa semia wo. Ntimi nkoka bi. 
Now, we and the Attorney General of Ghana. Emra Manukwane said, I'm going to be a Osha Ghana for a Nigerian Nima, or to me, or Chasso. Now, I said, No, 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 I but two man and as a bandra man, bandra man, and you know, one man majority no nine fifty seven point five six. Or you will be get what you have at home as a matter of agency. I'm appealing to the president of the attorney general, president of the republic, if he has any role to play. That trial should be aborted. The Attorney General should, as a matter of agency, file a knowledge prosecutor to end that particular decision. Sir, make a way because, but what's what? Ma, ye did the Ghana for a term. Ye did the Arsenal for a term. No, Kreni, some of you know, me who sabi sabi. In fact, what be a debate for Ghana? Sit down for no. You have a prosecute, you know. Now, the need in a quarter. Now, about two money, MP Edmund over there, and I go. And Koya, and my aunt Samra, Papa, and Master B, Ghana for a year, Juma, and Mampun to acquire. No better, my blame. It's on this day. Now, my country says, Samri, you are president. You know, I love you. This matter cannot go on. Attorney General. Odame, prayer de share, bono de share, shawo mumam, koko cha se mu yif de wa, mi an koya ni azgan. While we say this, we know that on the campaign trail, the president did make a number of remarks, making reference to the comments earlier that had been made by the candidate at the time on the campaign platform that well, he was ready to go to jail any time and then defend himself and will always come back. And so the president reacted to this. We'll bring you that again in set on the campaign platform of the president, Anado Danko Kufado. Yeah, if you say NDC for a penisa, Miss Ramu, Miss Ramu, Mamma, yes, I'm from Sonu, Mom Pet Opia, Opa, or Baba Yet a Juma, and your Baba Jaho, a China Appeal Court, or Chelsea Supreme Court, or Chelsea High Court, never be the area, your PMP. And, 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 and Jay Hyde, uh, so it looks like these calls and the pressure is being put on the Attorney General because mm. of all the pre-election comments that had been made, not only by the President, but also communicators of government. What do you say to this? Well, um, thank you very much and uh, greetings to your cherished viewers. I, first of all, would like to, you know, express my disappointment with the comments of the Domahini. Why? And I say so because for some time now I realized that the Domahini is coming across as a populist, if I should say, or perhaps best fit for the position of the SYNDZ position of propaganda secretary. You call the Domahini a populist? Yes, I mean, uh, with the greatest of respect. I a mean, populist? Uh, yes, I think that some of his commentaries have been quite unfortunate in recent times. I mean, this is not the first time that we've had controversial issues from the Domahini. But for a person who is within the judiciary circles, there is a, a person, an appeal co appeals court judge. You'd expect that some level of decorum or some 
level of circumspection will come in 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 in, in matters that, that the domain, even though uh, in, you know in, in private life uh, is uh, an appeals court judge doesn't exercise a sense of decorum you see and it is on the back of his position not just as a chief of this country but also a member of the judiciary that he has to be careful some of the utterances that he makes you see um, in the past years a number of people have been held before the courts in matters of contempt for discussing issues before the court. And in the recent time when Justice Tokunu was before the Parliament of Ghana, a question was asked about the issues of contempt. And then she said, and I, if I remember, her response was that there are about 400 courts in this country. At the apex of it is the Supreme Court. And there has to be measures to protect the courts and the persons who work within so as to guarantee the sanctity of the work of the courts including the Domanini himself. What did he say that is contemptuous of the case? And I say this because this is a matter, a criminal trial before the court. We have done with the first phase of the court. Nobody has denied Mr. Jachikwesen responsibility of his people for him to be at parliament. He swore an oath to abide by the constitution of Ghana. In reference to the constitution of Ghana, I'd like to go to the preamble, where we as a people- It's actually a high court judge. Yes. Okay, I mean, thanks for, I mean, the, the correction. But we, in this constitution, if I read the preamble, we, we the people of Ghana, we the people of Ghana, that is what we said in enacting this constitution, that in the exercise of our natural and inalienable right to establish a framework of government, we shall secure for ourselves and prosperity the blessings of liberty, equality, opportunity, and prosperity. And if I go to the last part, it says, do hereby adopt, enact, and give to ourselves this constitution. Now, Reference to Article 25 of the 1992 Constitution. And it says that justice emanates from the people and shall be administered in the name of the Republic by the judiciary, which shall be independent and subject only to this Constitution. Now, the judiciary is doing its work. How then does the Domaini come out to say that the Attorney General, and you see sometimes it's not even the proposition, but the commentary that follows. There's no, I mean, nobody has a problem with Mr. Jachikwesen I mean, coming up victorious in the election. The NPP as a party has even congratulated him. But does that mean that the person who has sort of, you know, has found himself in this position because of his own will, is going through the trial process. There's no evidence of, I mean, uh, misgivings. There's no evidence of sometimes, you know, what you say, political interference. And yes, the people, people one way or the other will express their opinion. And like the president referenced, he said that this is the person who said that he is ready. He knows very well the position he has taken, and he's solely responsible for it. Who are you referring to? I'm talking about Mr. Jachikwesen. I would have expected the Domahini to call Mr. Jachikwesen to order and ask him that if I were him to save the people of Asin North, the lack of leadership they are likely to face due to sometimes he being held before the courts, to at least perhaps take a side step, unless the NDC is telling us that the whole of Asindo doesn't have any other person to represent them. But to come out and say that, I mean, uh, Attorney General should desist from continuing with the case and the person had 57%, it's, it's quite pedestrian and unfortunate of a person. Okay, while it is, is pedestrian and unfortunate, according to you, mm. what exactly within the context of the speech of the Domahini. Right. That is contemptuous of the courts, but more also prejudicial to the case that's currently in court. You because see, you haven't, you ha you you haven't see, proven you see, that. Um, I, I say so because the Domahini was careful in not appearing to be interfering with the processes. So this is a statement that he made. He said, if I were a judge in the Supreme Court trial, I would have taken a left position instead of a right. In the judge equation issue, and perhaps you may want to read exactly what he said. He said that I would have taken a left instead of a right. And I think that for a person who is a member of the court, sometimes he seems to forget that he's not just a chief. I understand that as a chief, he's a partner in development, he's a partner in the progress of this country, and so he's entitled to share his opinion. But certain sensitive matters are not for the position of a chief. Because if you, as a chief, come out to see, make certain statements like the Domaini is making today, you open yourself for people to also express their opinion. And if you don't take care, you bring your office to disrepute.
Exactly. And so, so I would also have respect. And I mean, when I say this because I'm coming. I'm, I'm saying that I say this because this is not the first time that Domaini has waded into sensitive public matters. In recent times, it was the same person who said that anybody who is seeking to come into office must come and declare their stance on LGBTQ. I, as a person, I don't support any matters of LGBTQ. But you see, we also hold the opinion that these are sensitive public matters which are before parliament and other things. And then at every point in time, you realize that the man is towing the line of NDC commentary. And that is why I think that he's that very Doma befitting. Are you saying that Dr. Yes. Hene is, yes. is I NDC? Mean, time and again, his commentary has shown that he's biased towards the NDC. Okay. And that is why I hold the opinion that the NDC should do him the honest of making him the propaganda secretary of the NDC. So that the people of Doma, who are very much MPP alike, who also accept that their chief is, I mean, is a political... Mr. Hyde, you still haven't um, explained mm -hmm. how prejudicial the Domahini's comments mm -hmm. are to not only the courts... You see, I have said in that... In relation to contempt of the courts, but also that. prejudicial to the case that mm -hmm. currently is ongoing mm -hmm. at the courts. Roland, I said that. All that you have said so far, mm -hmm. if I have to wade in, into your conversation, is that he's made comments on LGBT, which... No, for, no, no. for, for my see, opinion, Roland, it's let, 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 let me learn. And, I think then that... the, and then the other side is that he's made comments that so far have no bearing on what is going on at the court. So no, but how I'm are saying his that comments prejudicial reference, reference to the court? And then also you see, contempt it is, of the court. It is not just his statement, but his person as a member of the court. You understand? So that if I, somebody, an ordinary citizen, comes to make a comment about this matter, the weight that individuals will put on this matter will be different from a judge who is coming from the courts. You understand? Do you know lawyer, lawyer Kukwasari? Professor, uh, Professor Kukwasari, Kukwasari, who is yes. usually referred to on, on social media yes. as Kukwasari. Yes. Do you know a number of individuals like Martin Pebble? Mm -hmm. Do you know a number of individuals? There's even me, a former um, judge who has also made some clear comments on the subject. You see, in all these references you have made, yes, you are please. talking about a lawyer who comes to the court to make a case before the judges. You are talking about a former judge, but I'm talking about a person who is a member of the current bench of the courts. And I'm saying that beyond his position as a judge, this is also a chief. And a chief must recognize that within Doma, there may be people who side with the position of the NPP, and there may be people who side with the position of the NDC. And so in wading into such conversations or such matters of public interest, it is just right for you to exercise some level of circumspection so that you don't appear as though, and I've mentioned earlier that it, this is not the first time. Time and again, we've had the Domahini wading into controversial issues and always trying to take a swipe at government. Nobody has issues with Doma, uh, the, uh, Mr. Jachikwesen. As a matter of fact, Jachikwesen is not the only NDC MP in this country. It is he, Judge Equation, who signed and swore an oath to the Republic of Ghana that he's a citizen of this country. And let us also be noted that this is not the first time somebody has been held before the Supreme Court on issues of dual citizenship. You know the very case of Ademu Sakande and how it ended up. And so to the impression which is being created that somebody is being hunted and somebody is being denied development, it is he who has brought it on the people of uh, Asin North. No, the and nobody hasn't said that um, having the case for which we have the MP elect mm -hmm. being prosecuted is hampering development. He hasn't no, no, said no. That. He said that. Now, no, now, listen, now, listen, now listen. that's it. That's it. I'm saying you, that you he said that. My no, question. no, no. You see, no. Let us let us admit Mr. that he Mr. said Jai that. Mr. Yes, Mr. Jehai. You still haven't answered my question. Mm -hmm. How his comments are prejudicial um, to the ongoing case and are contemptuous of the court. You still haven't answered that. I'm saying You've that. You've gone round and round no, no, and made commentary about his comment on LGBT and how it is unbecoming of him being the Domahini, mm. and at the same time holding the position in the judiciary as a high court judge. And I'm saying that, reference to Domahini, uh -huh. what makes his issues raised? He's not the first person to have made commentary about the case in court. I want you to get the contest right, that he's not the first person to have made comments about the issues before the courts. And ordinarily, if he were an ordinary person making comments about this thing, perhaps we wouldn't be sitting here discussing this matter. But weight is placed on his comments because this is the judge of the court. And then secondly, Domahini. In recent times, before, beyond the issues about the LGBT, we heard that Domahini recently taking a swipe How at Asante Hini. What has that got to do with the case in court? You see, and I'm saying that the case in it's court... Okay, I, don't hold you. Mm -hmm. I have Martin Pebu. Martin Pebu, good morning to you. You're a legal practitioner. Thank you for joining us. Mr. Pebu? 
Yes, good morning. Morning. Great. Please, have you heard the comment of the Domahini? Yes. Okay. Asking, is it specifically asking that the AG should discontinue the trial? E exactly. We're having a conversation. Okay, yes. We're yes, having please. a conversation here, and I, and I want a certain clarity. The comments he made, are there one prejudicial comments and contemptuous of the court in relation to the current ongoing case uh, involving Jachikwesen in relation to the renunciation of a citizenship and then perjury? No, uh, Mr. Walker, I, uh, I'm surprised. Uh, an argument could be made that this is prejudicial or much less contempt. No, but these are comments that I have made for the past how many months on the, uh, the key points, on the IFM, et cetera, even uh, other radio stations, UIFM, et cetera. But we want the Attorney General, we are begging him to discontinue. You know, there's a word no leave prosecutor, but we don't want technical terms. All we want is uh, simple English everybody will understand. So mm -hmm. we are begging the Attorney General to stop the trial because we, um, for me, I think that one, uh, as a nation, we've decided to move on. We've, we've decided to move on in the sense that there's currently before Parliament a bill that seeks to cancel the prohibition on dual citizens becoming MPs. So if as a nation we think or oh, want to allow them, and there are millions of them, millions of children in Ghana, they are dual citizens. So if now we have chosen to move on, it, it, it's, it's incongruent. It doesn't uh, listen, jail that at the same time we are prosecuting somebody for allegedly being a dual citizen at the time he stood for election. That's a key point for me. So there's a disconnect. It's like in one breath, oh, away with uh, this dual citizenship law. Away, away, away. Then in another breath, oh, yes, but let's punish this man for mm. being a dual citizen at the time uh, he stood for election. So is that kind of a uh, zigzag disconnect that I'm saying no. So uh, it, it doesn't, it's not prejudicial, it's not content at all. We've made these comments all over. Is it, I mean, actually I don't see it. But that is the nature of Ghana. You know, naturally, uh, things like this, uh, and it's not only Ghana, in every society, you would have people who would dissent. Dissent is part of every discourse. It will be strange, no matter how good the policy will be, that you bring it and all 30 million of us will agree. No, 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 that will not be a good, so, uh, that will be a strange society. It's normal to have people uh, dissent, uh, uh, dissent, people disagree. But the mm. larger majority will carry the vote that let's stop this trial. Even independence, when Kwame Nkrumah was seeking independence, even J.B. Dankwa, and uh, the rest, in the Buzia and Co., they wrote to the Queen that, no, we don't want independence. And they even sent a delegation. Buzia went to London to tell the Queen and the people that they are not interested, and then there was a delegation. Yes, yet when independence came, later didn't Buzia become prime minister, etc. So that is the nature of uh, this, uh, every society, that people would disagree. So it's all right that people disagree. Mm. Now, um how um, do we find the position of the Domahini as a traditional ruler on one side and then also as a, as a member of um, the bench on the other side? And how do we situate these comments? Well, as far as I'm aware, maybe now that uh, we are saying this, we have to reread the Supreme Court uh, decision uh, on chiefs in politics. Otherwise, from uh, my understanding of that case so far, he's within his right to uh, voice his call for the AG to stop the prosecution. It's legal. It's not politics. What he's saying is that, oh, these uh, dual citizens, they help this country. You see what he said? They bring in millions. Of course, it's not only the money, but they're also citizens. Mm. So he's saying that, ah, look, look at how they help in our development, look at how they are family members. Why are we uh, this is discriminating against them? It, it's not political. When a citizen, the chief is first and foremost a citizen of Ghana before being a chief. So as a citizen, he is within his right. The Supreme Court said when government is doing something, a development 
uh, this um, project, or I mean, so if they say development, of course, this case you can be seen as development. If you find that the project is good, yes, you can place government for it. Okay. Equally, if you find, so that's the Supreme Court decision I'm now situating, that for a chief, if you find that government is doing a development project, you find it is good, you can praise government. So similarly, if government is undertaking a project that you think it's not good, you can criticize. So in this case, the project now is the prosecution of the occupation. Don't forget, that's money we are using to prosecute. That time and other resources, that's money. It's a project. Yes, meaning that because as part of development, we have law enforcement. So that if we don't enforce the law, the development that projects you do everything will come to nothing. I do you are building a school. Okay. You have light and all those things. And then somebody goes to take their lives, a chief steals the light, the iron rods, etc. If you don't prosecute uh, then it means that your development projects will not go for it because every time you are developing, people can come and steal the items as well, and nothing will be done to them. And so you will not get development. So, okay. get point. so right. in this context, I see the criminal prosecution as falling within the context of development. So if uh, a chief finds that, oh, this project you are undertaking, a criminal prosecution, he doesn't think it's a good one, yes, he can voice his consent. So it's well within uh, his right. All right. And we should be loving Domatini for doing that because this is currently a state that so many people don't want to talk. You see, the people who don't want to talk, they forget that we all voted for President Kufuado. If there's nobody who likes President Kufuado more than me. Those days, 2015, whenever I saw him, I mean, just see him on TV, it was so exciting that, oh, at long last, at long last, President Kufuado is going to take over. I was so happy, and I was like, Mama will see a real president. You know, the title was that this is a man who has been prepared for 40 years. That was what we were told. And he had said incorruptible. We bought into it. You see, so this is a man we loved. I have never voted for your Mama. No, never voted for him. In fact, I moved, I voted for him. In fact, me, I changed every eight years. Every eight years, I changed government because we found out that. Uh, apart from Asamil, most of all of the other presidents usually are corrupt. There's bad governance. So every eight years, we should change. So my point is that right now, people are not talking. People who voted for Ekufuado, they have a duty to also talk. They have a duty to talk. You see how so far Ekufu came and then liberated us for a while. Other than okay. Professor Osai, uh, pro former president of the University of Ghana. We see Pratt and Co. But they are not enough people. That's the thing. All right, Mr. So Kwebu, thank you very much for, for your comment as well. Now, now, Mr. Jehide, conclude for me. So you, you heard I mean, from Mr. Martin. I, I, I would have wished that you had brought in someone who is neutral because you already know the position of Mr. Martin Kwebu on this subject matter. And you are asking him what is already known. But notwithstanding that, I think I still maintain my position that for the Domaini, as relevant as he is to our body politics and as a stakeholder to the development and the... Uh, and you call him you know, an NDC propagandist. Yes, 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 I mean, I, I, don't, I haven't changed my position on that, uh, on that issue because time and again he's disappointed me. I mean, I have what the Domahini lead developmental issues, I mean, leading public, you know, um, works in the Doma area. And I, I find that very commendable. But at the same time, I also find it very unfortunate that time and again he weighs into certain controversial issues, which is quite disappointing, especially given that his where he comes from or the the, the traditional area where he leads. I've also so got how would you call the Ochehini? You see, I mean, I don't have a subject it, issue. If there is an issue before me concerning Ochehini, I will discuss that. For now, let's so how would let's you call, which type of propagandist will you call the Ochehini then? And I'm saying that the issue at stake right now, I don't have an issue before me concerning the Ochehini. As and when the time arrives, I'll, I'll talk about it. What do you make of all this commentary, especially uh, now that the Domahini, who also doubles as a high court judge, has doubled into this issue? Thank you so much. Uh, and once again, good morning to your viewers. The first thing for me is to deal with the president. The president is a renowned lawyer. He has practiced in Ghana. So not only is he a citizen of Ghana, he's a very well-known lawyer who practiced extensively. In fact, that's one of the issues that helped him to become president. And then, on top of all that, he is the president. So, when he spoke about 
the case in more direct terms than the Domahine has done and indicated that why would you vote for somebody who is going to be going to prison? Who is in contempt? And who is acting prejudicially? Mm. If you can't start with the president, leave Domahini alone. Because his, the Domahini statement is actually completely off the scale when you take the president's statement. One, how does the president know that assuming that Chachi Kwesin is even found guilty, he'll be given a prison sentence. Can he not be fined? Can he not be given probation? Why must it be a prison sentence? So now he's waded into, not only has he convicted the person, he's actually waded into the sentence that the person is supposed to receive. Is that not prejudicial coming from the number one gentleman of the land? Who is a lawyer? If he's domain is a judge and he's a lawyer, wouldn't he know better? So even if you want to assume that your arguments, my colleagues' arguments against Domaini are valid and they are not, then he should start with the president first and indicate all those uh, adjectives he has used for Domaini. He should apply them first to the number one gentleman of the land because it's totally unfair to just see the Domaini in one posture and see the president in another. The president should not have commented about the potential prison sentence of somebody who is before the courts. Some will even go as far as saying that he has prejudiced the fair trial position of Chachi Kwesin in this matter. And he should not have commented on it. That's my starting point. But the Doma Himini has a right to comment. Because his was simply an advice to the Attorney General. He didn't make any comment about the case itself. He just said, in my opinion, this is what I think you should be doing. And he was just reiterating the points that you have even noticed. All of us have been making. Look. It is all right to say, my children, yet when you speak about your daughter, you say she, and when you speak about your, your son, you say he. But they are all children. So the fact that Chachi Kwesin is in court on a similar matter to deal with what uh, Sikande dealt with, is like chalk and cheese. It's like boy and girl. If you take the facts, there are two different cases. People are trying to, it's the same area. What, what do you make of the equation? Ah, why? The government itself is telling us today, forgive us, it's not our problem. It was COVID that has put us in the problem that we are in. That is what government is telling us. It is COVID and then Russian Ukraine war. Therefore, all the haircuts, all the problems with our economy, the fact that we have been downgraded and we are junk status, all is because of COVID. And we should rather sympathize with their position. They have done well. In the same breath, they are saying that they don't want to consider Chachi Kwesin, who put in his renunciation all the way in December, one year before the election, and got it before we even went to election. So at the time when the people were voting for Chachi Kwesin, he was a Ghanaian citizen. Clear. They all know this. And at the time when he swore in as an MP, he was a Ghanaian citizen. He's also served punishment. Because for 18 months, they gave a, 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 the, the Supreme Court put an injunction on him. And finally, actually had him removed. And he has now gone. And the people say, we still love you. We want you. Adain. Nuke Joa. Just allow the man to be the MP for his people. It's as simple, it's not, you see, what the Domahini was saying, for me, is just common sense. And you see, when you are in court, you are not a persecutor in criminal cases. You are a prosecutor. There's a difference. Yours is not to persecute people. Yours is to prosecute issues that 
And you always have to look at the public interest criteria. You must. You have somebody, I always use a simple example. Yes. You go through a red light because there's an ambulance behind you with somebody sick and you are in front of him. So you move through the red light. You have committed an offense. Though. Why aren't they in court? Because the public interest recognizes that the situation is such that that is an emergency. Move your car. But the offense has been committed. It's a strict liability offense. So why is it that in every case, when you are going to pursue it, as a prosecutor, you look at all the facts and decide whether it's the interest of the country for this matter to go ahead. What is the interest of this case? Even before the by-election, the case was not, a, in our humble opinion, a case that should be moving forward. Now that the people have actually voted for him with more votes than he had when he even was when he went for the first time at the general election. Mm. It's a clear message. That's why everybody is saying, please, Attorney General, this is not the case that you should be pursuing. You, <laughs> you have a situation where if you take the words of what Dobahi said, he said absolutely nothing that anybody hasn't said already. And the fact that he's a judge does not mean that he does not have an opinion. The case is not before him. It's before a different medicine. He didn't tell the judge what to do. Mm. He never spoke about the judge mm. or the judgment. He spoke directly to the president and to the attorney general to take a second look at it and file a nolly prosecute. Mr. Sabbath, the, yeah. Yeah. There's uh, an inference yeah. that Mr. Jihad also made yes. too, yeah. and which is that he also doubled yeah. as, a, as a high court judge. Yes. For me, it doesn't take you, it's been answered, it doesn't take away from his position as a citizen and a paramount you know. Yes, it doesn't. And this is a matter which opinions must be given. And even if you, and that's why I said that, even if you want to go down that road, start with the president. If you want to go down that road, start with the president. I haven't heard him condemning the president. What the president said, was it... It, it, it's worse than what Domain needed. If you want to look at it, he's the first gentleman on the land. He has a lot, he has ultimate influence. Let me put it that way. So why make a question about a case that is ongoing, where the facts of the case could lead to an acquittal? After all, there was a referee, and the referee was given the documents, and the referee said, go ahead. Where is the mens rea in the, in the fourth he has done? And even if there was supposed to be a mens rea in the initial stage, hasn't it been negated by the fact that there was a referee there? So there's a possibility of an acquittal. Why isn't anybody putting more emphasis on his innocence? And you are putting more uh, emphasis on the fact that not only is he uh, uh, convicted already, you have given a sentence of imprisonment. No, no. Let's be clear that the, the, the statements of Domahini are what everybody in Ghana is saying. Pure, pure common sense. Mm. And it makes political sense as well that it is a show of magnanimity by government at this stage to say, look, upon all, it's not now looking like you are persecuting the man. At all costs, we must have him. And the Sikande case has got nothing to do with what Chachi Kwesin did. Sikande was using two, he had three passports, the Ghana one, the Burkina one, and also the British one. And when he was sworn in as an MP, he had made no attempt to renounce any of those. Things. And he was actually using the passports when he, uh, the matter was then brought mm. before the... So what is the comparison? Mm. And even he, when he was in court, nobody took his right away as acting for his people. He was an MP right down to the appeals. This guy has been out from the, for 18 months. That alone is even questionable. Mm. So let, let's not uh, look at... And I don't want to go into too much law is before the this, but the, for me, I 100% behind from a legal position as well as from a political position. It doesn't make sense to continue mm. with this prosecution. Um, Mr. J. Hyde, um, if you label a traditional ruler mm. as a political party propagandist, and in this instance, the Domahini as an NDC propagandist, and I'm, I'm just looking through the various constituencies that make up the Doma Paramountcy mm. or that um, are located within the Doma Paramountcy. I can find Central, Doma Central, I can find West, etc. Um, MPP candidates, mm. assigns, mm. and even 
um, their leadership. When they go to Doma, do, do they go to pay homage to the Doma Hene? Supposedly, and in your description, an NDC propagandist. Well, I mean, who is this man? He's a Doma Hene. He's a ruler and overlord of the area. So as custom demands, people who go into the land will go and pay homage to him. But like I said, in his capacity, if he devils into sensitive matters of that nature, people will also respond alike. I would have expected that for a person of his caliber, you know, sometimes he's not the only chief we have in this country. We've seen rulers across the length and breadth of this country. Why is it that the Domaini only chooses certain sensitive issues that more or less have government interests and chooses always to go on the attacking position of... Like which uh, other issues? I've raised the issue about this LGBT issue. The LGBT issue is a national issue. It's a national issue, indeed. But we all know How the does matter... It become a political We all issue? know... I mean, we all know the issues before Parliament. And I mean, I was in Asin North. We saw how the NDC sort of twisted this particular LGBT issue just to create disaffection for our candidates and the government. You understand? But that is not the, 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 the issue at the center of this discussion. I have said time and again that nobody has an issue if the Doma issue, uh, the Domahini expresses his opinion about how he feels that the judiciary should operate. But in this particular matter, or on this particular issue, where the Attorney General is only exercising his constitutional mandate, then you go in to go and talk about how, one, I would have taken left, two, um, the, 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 the process which is before the court is him hampering the person's work and his development. Nobody has stopped Mr. Jachukwishin from doing his work. If he's making appeal for Mr. Jachukwishin, he should ask Mr. Jachukwishin to come and tell the Ghanaian people and the people of Asino that I made a mistake. I have some responsibility for my actions. And so, therefore, I'm appealing to the Ghanaian people to come and forgive me. In any case, if the Attorney General exercises a certain mandate in this direction, he is exercising it on behalf of the Ghanaian people. Roland, there are people in this country who have been imprisoned for going to steal three tubes of yam. We see it each and every day. The only reason why Mr. Jachukwesin is before the court is because in the interest of the state, something untoward has happened. He has all the rights accrued to him by this constitution to go before the courts and prove himself innocent. And nothing stops him from doing that. At the end of the day, recently the NDC were before the Supreme Court. We were in a synod when they came to court and came to appeal to the court that they need their candidate to come on the ground. The court approved of that. No. No, I'm coming. Relax. No, Relax. no, 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 no. Relax. The court said that the trial can continue within the space of time. However, at the time, the Attorney General's position was that the person must keep coming to the court. The court gave a leave so that he can go and continue his campaign. No, but it was it, it was only when there was an application made to the exactly, court. Exactly, but that's so what I'm saying. Put, that, that, have, but no, no, you see, but that's what I'm saying. That to put that into perspective. This was an issue before the court, and the court granted the leave for the person to go and do the campaign. Based on an application. Based on an application, of course. You can only but go and seek... the intention of the Attorney General was No, that. but what I'm saying is that if you go, it is only the court that can grant you this thing when you make an appeal. And that is why the court is in the middle of this discussion. You go and make your case as a person before the court. The Attorney General also goes to make a case why you should be prosecuted. If you prove yourself innocent, nobody can take that away from you. And the Domahine has why is it that? Into, no, I'm coming. Into, why is it that point, at every point, point of, in time? Point of order. In, in, into the point, of order. point of order. Let's get the facts straight. Yeah. The court never ruled that Chachikwesin can have time to go and campaign. In fact, the court has ruled against the application of the uh, councils or the case of Chachi Kwesin. No. And that is why the thing has now been appealed no. to the place. No. On the, let me state the facts. We put in an application. The judge heard the matters on a Wednesday and said, I will not give a judgment on this matter till Friday. So the matter was in abeyance. The judge then said, the defense then appealed that we want the defense, um, Mr. Tachi Kwesin, to be excused from the judgment on the Friday, which was opposed by the attorney general, but was granted by the court that you don't have to come for that judgment on the Friday. Exactly. It, it, exactly. 
No. So he was on grounds of campaign it on was, the day? No. It was, not it was not because of that. She just felt, you do, it's a judgment I'm going to give. And people are recluse from judgments every day. So on that occasion, it was, she didn't say, go and campaign. So that was not what was said. And my position is that the judge could if, have insisted that Mr. Judge Quisin come yes, to court on that day. But she didn't. And the judge granted it. And she ruled it against, only. she ruled against us on the Friday. Point made. That is but the, the important that I'm also making is that at the end of the day, you are saying that by inference, they gave the opportunity only, for exactly, Judge It is to only the same court that you go, that can speak against you, the same court that can grant you whatever okay. you are seeking from the courts. And it is just unfortunate that at every point in time, the, the, the NDC wants to take a swipe at the court, attack the court, when things are not going in their favor. Put all these things aside, and you take the Domahini as a subject matter. And my disappointment with him, with the greatest of respect, I keep using the greatest of respect because I have utmost respect for the Domahini. Except to also call a speed a speed that the tangent that he's going, he can only invite some of these, I mean, I mean uh, perspectives for himself. Because as Which far as I'm concerned, has he gone to? no, like I said, I have made lay claim to the fact that time and again it appears that the Domaini likes to take a swipe up government. And you see, if he were an ordinary citizen, nobody would have a problem with it. Perhaps we'll even be sitting here having this discussion. Is that why you call him an NDC propagandist? Yes. Yes, and I mean, it, 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 it's disappointing. Why do you call him an NDC propagandist? I'm saying that the Domaini over time has made certain commentary which presupposes that, you know, he aligns with the NDC. We all know matters of this matters arising out of. So, which of the chiefs then are MPP propagandists? For that, I cannot speak to it. As far as I'm concerned, if you bring me an issue, I'm you know learned and open-minded enough to decipher the issues and take a certain. Do stance. you think that labeling chiefs, traditional leaders of their sort, especially within the realm for which the constitution gives the recognition to traditional mm. rulers and chiefs, right, um, of their existence and their role? within our, our society and the democratic process, to be labeling them as uh, political propagandists. Mm. I mean, Roland, have you heard anybody labeled as Santini as a political propagandist throughout your practice of Because nobody has exhibited any lack of decorum um, for that. Yes. Perhaps they've given uh, Santini the, the respect. Yes. Have you, you, have decided, have you, you have decided have you, no, no, not I'm to saying that. I'm saying that. I'm saying that. Have you, have you, have you heard NDC anybody? Propaganda. Have you heard anybody, you know, uh, raise issues about the Oguahini and the government chair and other people? I'm saying that this is not the first time an issue has come before us concerning the Domahini. But I find his position on national issues in recent times quite unfortunate. And I think that it's high time perhaps the National House of Chiefs you know, sort of sit him down and advise him. Because the point is that once the issue is of public interest, if you make a comment and you take a position on that, people would just oppose it by opposition. People would, you know, interrogate the issues and also take a position on that matter. I think he's a very fine man. I have seen him, like I said earlier, champion developmental issues in his area. And I think that he should remain in that position. But once he invites himself to doing the bidding of the NDC, who will respond alike. Mm. You know the Chieftaincy Act. Roland. Sir, you know the Chieftaincy Act. And if you go to Article 162 of the 1992 Constitution, based on what provision within the Chieftaincy Act and then Article 164, um, and, and subsequently, what, would you be in a position to say that um, the, the Domahini would have to be um, reprimanded by the you National know, House of Chiefs? Um, Roland, um, sometimes, I mean, I, I'm a young guy, so I'm, I'm being careful in my choice of words. But then you see... Uh, article two, 270, actually. You see, I'm a young guy, so to understand, I'm being careful in my choice mm -hmm. of You're words. You're a young guy, but you just called uh, a traditional no, I mean, ruler of a paramount. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, uh, that's as a, a propagandist. I mean, my position has not changed about that, but I'm saying You're not that going to apologize perhaps, for that. No, I'm not. What is there to apologize for? All right. Perhaps... Given the opportunity, I probably would have delved deeper into these matters, but let's remain where we are. But I say that the Domahini in his position, with all the influence and all the people that serve under him, it would have been better for him to remain where he is. Let his people, and perhaps, I mean, how many times have you heard Supreme, uh, courts, judges at the courts coming to express opinions about the decisions of colleague judges? 
How many times do you see that? The Domahini, which decision of a judge has he exhibited or expressed opinion on? Ah, I've said that a question issue. He said that. He said that. And the context of his even his choice, because sometimes before you see a certain position, you take a certain position, you build a preamble. Even the preamble, I find it unfortunate. But he said it that if he had, and that means that he had an interest in the matter. He said that if he were a member of the Supreme Court, he would have taken a position other than what the position of the Supreme Court was. So it means that he disagreed with the position of the Supreme Court. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm saying that for a sensitive matter like this, that from where I sit, has and divided the country. And I'm asking you, uh, Mr. J. Hyde, right. what expression of position in terms of opinion has the Domahini made on this case? That is prejudicial. And the issue about prejudicial is the fact that this is a matter before the courts. The matter is being prosecuted by Attorney General. He has not said that the matter before the court is not necessary to be there. Please, do you have but the insight of, of the Please, please play. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, J Jihai, this just is the fact hold, hold your the fire. Hold your fire. Please, um, let's listen to uh, lawyer Kwame Jantua to on the subject. Side to this particular issue also. One, as in North is a swing uh, uh, constituency. Two, if it so happens that Judge Christian is found guilty, the commentary would be from the MPP. Yes, the NDC brought Judge Christian when they know he had a criminal case. People of Asin North and the NDC would say they are witch hunting us. When is it going to end? Mm. Look, for me, the Supreme Court verdict came out. That should should end everything. They expunged Judge Christian out of Parliament. It should end everything. The MPP should go back and do their homework well. Because, one, they rejected the president's uh, presentation with regards to Judge Christian. They rejected what the MPP said. So they should go back and try and build confidence within the people because it's a swing constituency. Right. It can go either way. Right. Look, the next election, eh, it could happen that the party in power might not have majority in parliament. And so every seat in this country for the next election is key. Because you see, one of the things they did, they campaigned for Judge Christian, unfortunately. Mm. His name was everywhere on their lips, on the NDC lips. They were campaigning for him indirectly. Mm. So mm. my advice to the uh, Attorney General, file a motion of knowledge prosecutor mm. and MPP, go back and do your homework properly. The principles of rule of law would work in court. So the evidence that would be brought forth, if that evidence from the Attorney General is not strong enough and it can be counted by the education, who has won? Mm. Kwame Jantua, would you say that he's an NDC propagandist, um, Mr. Isaac J. Hyde? He also says and advocates that I'm saying that nothing stops anybody from expressing their opinion. So why is it that when the but I'm saying that mm -hmm. the Domahini expressing the judge, opinion is a problem? No, you see, it is not just his expression of an opinion. The what is it? It is the doing? position which he holds within this particular dispensation. He is a judge of the court. Mm -hmm. At the same time, he is a paramount chief. Okay. And so therefore, it will, it is only right that he is circumspect in making pronouncements on this subject matter. What is rule of law? Rule of law in the sense that we all agree that this is the law before us and we are all going to be fairly treated before it. Oh. At the end of the day, if Judge Equation goes to the court and the court pronounces him innocent, nobody has an issue with it. The NPP did not go and force Judge Equation out of parliament. It is a matter before the court and the court determined it. How can he be proved you know, not convicted when the president of the land has said he's going to jail? But the president is not the judge. So why is, is Domahini the judge? Why are you accusing mm -hmm. Domahini? Domahini Doma has, not is even, he has not even commented on the, on the case. Mm -hmm. But he's the president. This is the point you are missing. He's even higher than the judge. He appoints the judges of the Supreme Court. So, uh, on the same breath you are accusing Domahini, start with the president. So, are you equalizing? Mr. I'm Sibiko? not equalizing. I'm saying that none of uh, commentary on issues like that, up to a certain point, you don't jump down it. But worst comments should be condemned first. 
And I'm telling you and showing you that what the president did was prejudicial. That is prejudicial. He, was, he has convicted the man already. He has convicted him. By? By saying that he's going to jail. Why? And I've told you that even in the sentencing range, jail is not the only option. So why have you decided that he's going to jail? In any event, why, for him to go to jail, you must have convicted him already. In other words, he's convicted. So this argument, there's a look. Ochihini, Asantihini. Asantihini talked at his at a Deba about uh, Galamsi. Is he a propagandist? For any political he party. The, who he, he said that we are, we everybody is talking about chiefs. We don't give land. The lands are, are allocated by people sitting in Accra from the government side. More or less was what he said. Is he a propagandist? No. And it is important that our leaders at certain points should comment on things and let their opinions be known. You either take it or you leave it. But not for them to be a leader and be quiet on everything. It's wrong. You must have an opinion. Why do you think that the churches have come out strongly against LGBTQ? You said, oh, the people, these are leaders of churches. Listen, the Muslim community have come out against it. All politicians have kept quiet because we all know the delicacy of the issue. But are you saying that they, in their capacity, should not? Why are they propagandists? Do you think that... After, so now all the church leaders have become propagandists for the NDC? Do you think or that, what? Do you think that by the position that um, Mr. J. Hyde here... Yes. And I'm sure that's a position of government and then the ruling MPP yeah. currently. Um, individuals like the Domahini, who also doubles as, the, as a high court judge... Yes. Uh, are being hounded or being just uh, no, finger pointed? No, I think they, wrote, they don't understand their position. What is the point of a leader talking about something that if people who are affect, not in power... Affect the general society. Uh, yes, after all, when you're in power, it is criticism that is going to come. When you're in power, it is criticism that is going to come. You are in charge of the matter, of the country. You rule, you make decisions, you pass laws, or send laws to be passed in parliament. So please, when criticism is coming, the time you get upset is when it's not constructive. When you say that, oh, this is a biased form of criticism. But when constructive criticism is being given to you by a good range of members of the public at a high level, it's not for you to ignore it. Why? When we criticized the president, for him saying that, ah, don't say there will be no haircuts. Don't say it. He came out and said it. Then all of a sudden people start trying to spin it. We've had the haircuts. So advice that is given. So all the people who were advising him not to have done it or not to do certain things, are they propagandists? Or is it because it's the NDC that says don't talk about 111 hospitals? You can't do it in this time span. If you are going to do it, even give it, you said 18 months, and you can't do it, and all of a sudden we have become propagandists. We say you can't do it. So show us that you have done it. You haven't done it. So let us be circumspect about constructive criticism and just propagandists. The, uh, that statement is wrong. Okay. Or uh, Domahini has not, is not a propagandist for the NDC. He's, got, he's a chief. He represents people. He has judicial knowledge because he's a judge, and he's giving advice as a chief of people that, hey, and that advice is being echoed by lawyer upon lawyer. So there is a group of people who stand and say, this that is going on mm. should not All continue. Right. Now, well, let me read this story. And this story, um, of course, came up when we had um, a nominee for the Supreme Court, who is now Justice of the Supreme Court, Clemens uh, Justice uh, Jackson Hunyanuga, who apologized for endorsing the president, Nanado Dankwe Kufuadu, ahead of the 2020 general election. Uh, of course, he came under fire for doing that. And subsequently, when he, when he appeared before the, the appointment committee of parliament, he did that uh, apology. Um, he is a paramount chief of the Nyagbo traditional area in the Volta region. But subsequently related to Asin Central, we also know that the, the police perform creditably according to what the observers and the media, including independent observers, also did say. So we want to take a look at how that performance could be carried on 
into the next election, the 2024 general election, which is just um, a year and then also four months away, or let's say almost five months away. Um, Mr. J. Hyde, how would you describe the performance of um, the Ghana Police Service, the other security apparatus, and then how we can carry that uh, forward into the general election in 2024? Well, um, thank you very much, Roland. I, I mean, I'm a big fan of the IGP, and I, I think kudos to him for the sort of facelift he's given to the Ghana Police Service. Um, we've seen the police at Kumewu, we've seen them at Asin North. Um, in terms of the discharge of their duties, I think so far so good. I mean, it sort of put some confidence in the system that indeed we have a service with integrity. I mean, I'm just hopeful that, I mean, the sort of confidence that the Ghanaian people are having in them, we are able to be able to shoulder that burden mm -hmm. and then carry us through for, I mean, a successful election once again. I, one way or the other, at a synod, I saw one or two things which uh, the police did with, I mean, I, I, I... You were there? Yes, I mean, I was, I, I was in a synod for about 21 days and um, I was not too comfortable with it, but I think that uh, this is an issue which I've been left for uh, our party leadership to handle, so I wouldn't want to delve into it. But generally, I think that the police have, you know, up their game. And it's worth commending. Mm. What can we take? Uh, of course, there were arrests of um, individuals in at least one that I saw who was in some le level of military fatigue. And then, of course, some others that had dressed and towardly. And so um, the police made sure that they, they sanitized that. I think my colleague is being charitable with the way the MPP, in its statement, they criticized the police. Did and the they? officials, they criticized the police. They said they were not happy with certain decisions. The police were fantastic. Look, the Kumewu by election and uh, Asin North. Fantastic policing. Fantastic? Look, things happened. By the way, MPP should tell us which of their people got injured. We have a catalogue of our people, that people, somebody's car was shot into Malik Basintale. The bullet went through the back and came through the front window. Meanwhile, people were not supposed to even go there with arms. So the police did everything it had to do to ensure that both elections were peaceful. I'm saying this because there's a vicious rumor, and I've used the word rumor, going about that people are thinking of changing the IGP. It will be unfortunate. When, when did you hear that? I've heard it in, on various platforms. You mean so, the, something in the grapevine? It's the grapevine. Whether it's true or not, I'm saying it here. That it's a rumor. So I stand to be corrected. It will be sad. It will be sad. Is it true? But, well, let me land. He will come and... Mm. The policing on the day was good. What happened? First thing in the morning, all the police people deployed were present. They were not armed. And so when people got there, you got the impression. So when certain things were happening, they could not necessarily take part in it, but they try and because of their numbers, they were able to try and keep things calm. Most of the things happened on the streets or in terms of our youth organizer, in terms of our communication officer, in terms of our, uh, uh, what's it called, deputy communication officer, in terms of the guy who was uh, hit with some instrument to his head, who was in hospital, things happened. Mm -hmm. The police kept us calm, told us they would deal with it. By the time 4.30 came, the armed police had arrived. Nobody could go and snatch any ballot boxes. Nobody could go and pick anything. All the macho people who were around, then they were around. There was no way they could do anything. The macho men from where? They were not from us. Really? They were not from us. So I'm not accusing anybody directly, but they were there. Then DC brought three buses There's, of macho men to Savior Church. <laughs> you, you are not aware of this. You, 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 are, you, you continue me, accusing us. I haven't me, accused me. anybody. But I'm saying that your nobody of yours was injured. It's the same with the Dagbo issue. Oh, there was a war, but only one side got killed. That's MPP style for you. 
Every day, oh, this start. Nobody died in Dagbon. Only people who were from a certain one clan, side. One side. And yet it was supposed to be a war. Constantly propaganda of this nature. We went to Asin North and who got injured? Yet we brought three bus loads of people for uh, what's it called? And nobody on their side has got a story, a bad story to, say, to, to tell about what happened to them. So I'm clear. The police was good. Policing has changed. When they won Kumewu, there was no problem with the police. When they lost Asin North, in their own statement, they criticized police. And that is why we have concerns. Because once they start criticizing police like in the statement, it's a precursor of things that may, may or may not happen. How do you mean? Because this rumor that has come out of the blue, we are not happy with it all. Which rumor is that? About the potential dismissal of, or removal of the IGP. Where did you hear this rumor? It's on platforms everywhere. It's on platforms. And so I'm not saying it's true, but we are on a, he is here. He is in government. You should tell us. You, should, you understand? He is in government. We have heard it. So you should tell us whether there's any such thing on the card as to the removal. And we are concerned because we think that this is the time to be giving commendations. <laughs> Including For, the chairman of the police council. Who is the chairman of the police council? On whose leadership? The, the vice president. That, he should come yeah. and tell us what his position on LGBTQ is. Mm -hmm. Let the, the president, chairman, let I mean, the vice president, yeah. chairman, think yeah. all let, let come us, and tell us, us what their position Chief. on LGBT. It's no, a public we're national we're having, issue. You're having the discussion on the police. So, <laughs> so, but uh, <laughs> you took the police. I read the the yes, and I've told you that you're the police. You, yes. want, you wanted me to commend somebody. The person you want me to commend has not told me what his position is on a very important national issue. Yeah, what is so I want him to do that one first before I start commending him on. Uh, the police council. He no, should but, do but, that. But, but this matter of, uh, you, you are saying there's a speculation that the IGP could be. Yes. Killed. That, well, is, at, at the moment, it's a rumor. So let's it's just. It's in the grapevine. Yes. It's on the, it's on the platforms. So, what so when if, I saw it, I was what, like, what ah, if it's I, changed? There's somebody who is the appointing authority. Then maybe I'll become a prophet if he's changed. <laughs> or the rumors have become true. Hmm. So I'm just saying that. It is, this is not. We believe that, look, we have problems when we speak as it is. If it hasn't been done well, why? Kumawu, we lost. We didn't blame any police officer. The EC, have we said anything about EC on the two elections? Apart from there was an incident of an EC official getting this thing signed at Kumawu. One incident, uh, a single swallow does not make a summer. So, look, it's an incident. When you have cumulative... When we went to Asin North, EC did what they had to do, brought their resources. We haven't criticized EC. If there's a, an incident happens, we have to criticize. We criticize. What is the issue with the police criticism on this, on this particular Asin North issue? What, what, what is it that they did that was a problem? What All was right. it? All right. Uh, you, you wanted <laughs> to make a point. Yes. Um, I began by saying that I'm a big fan of the I, IGP and what he mm. has achieved with the Ghana police ever mm. since he mm. took over. Mm. And... I think that he's going to create a big problem for whoever is going to take over from him when the time is due. Why? But you see, let us also not create an impression that the IGP's position is a lifetime position. Please say that again. I let us not it. create an impression as though the IGP's position is a lifetime position. So it is true he'll be changed? No, I don't know that. Okay. I haven't heard it anywhere. So what that are you saying? The IGP is going to be changed. But, but you're I'm saying, saying that, that his position is a lifetime Even if position. he's changed, somebody was there before he came. If he says his tenor, somebody will come in. And it is just a normal practice. Mm -hmm. So the impression being created as though somebody is going to somebody is going after somebody. In any case, it is this government that has given room for the IGP to operate. It is this government, under the chairmanship of the vice president of the Republic of Ghana, that the IGP has had room to champion all the innovations that you are seeing. At a certain note, we saw Ghana police flying drones all over the place. Under the chairmanship of the vice president out of digitalization, we are seeing all these improvements. Of the police council. Exactly. And so, uh, for me, I don't see why we should make a big deal. I mean, and then this, of course, I mean, we'll take this as one of the usual things, trying okay. to create, and create an impression that something it. is coming. But is like I said... Right? You think it's the NDC that's spreading oh, the I mean, it, they, they, are, they are doing that. But like I said, <laughs> assuming the president of the republic chooses to make a shake-up within the security services, there's nothing wrong with that. 
the IGP has to be commended for his work. But at the same time, we also reserve the right to criticize when we have to, just like we did. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Please, if you can get an insight of Justin Kodia on the day. Uh, he said he was not happy. So, but let's uh, speak to the Chief Executive for Securities Warehouse Limited. He's a security consultant, helps us uh, on regular programming on security, uh, not only on TV3 New Day, but also on other platforms as well. Dr. Adam Bona, good morning to you. Good morning, Roland. Now, now great. Uh, my, uh, let me just read um, CODEO, and that's uh, the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers. Uh, and, and they, and, and they in, in their reported incidents section of their statement, did say that there was intimidation at uh, a venue where we we're having um, the election during uh, um, the Asin North uh, by-election of a journalist of Adom TV. There was also violation of a, brut, uh, a voting procedure. There was also, around 1 p.m., a convoy of vehicles with MPP occupants occupied by the Ashanti Regional Chairman, Chairman Wun um, They pursued a vehicle occupied by NDC supporters from a different polling station. And then they vandalized the vehicle, according to this uh, independent report by Kodeo. Now, um, they said the police tried to um, contain the situation in a way. How would you describe some of these incidents that have been reported by these independent election observers, and then also the performance of the police on the other hand? Well, yes, Roland, let me... Good morning to your viewers and good morning to your institute panelists. Uh, you know, two things. We must commend the police for a good job done uh, since the current IGP took over. And so we must not forget that this country, we've got to uh, that tipping point where, in fact, in front of the police headquarters, a forest bureau was robbed, and some of us, uh, you know, screamed and screamed our lungs out that things were just going, uh, you know, in a manner that this country could be destabilized to, you know, those who are into crime activities. Fortunately, fast forward, uh, things have stabilized largely. And that has had a positive impact on, uh, for the first time since 1992. Remember, uh, we are celebrating the current dispensation, 30 years since we, uh, you know, uh, we turned this into this current dispensation. It's 30 years. And for the last 30 years, every by election has been characterized by pure violence, needless, you know, uh, injury, needless, you know, banter amongst the two feuding uh, parties, usually, the two suspects, NDC and MPP. But for the first time, Kumau was so peaceful, we didn't hear any violence. You remember the inform infamous Ayawaso, and some of, some of us are too pained by, you know, the excesses in Ayawaso. As we speak, Roland, those who, who got injured in Ayawaso, we still haven't compensated them, compensated them as a people. I think we should also be looking at that. Now you go to our thing. The police put in, and literally, I wasn't there, but I had my ears on the ground. I spoke to my friends, some leadership of the MPP, spoke to some leadership of the NDC. I spoke to what do you call it, the security agencies on the ground, it was almost as if I was there. So I knew everything that was taking place. And so mine is that the police should be highly commended. But it is unfortunate that a section of uh, the ruling government or the party in government, uh, one way or the other, uh, are not satisfied. And what I am saying is that, Roland, you, wrote, you read, uh, you know, the, the release by Kodio. Yes, it would please. have been worse. It would have been worse. It would have been worse than Ayawasu was working. Mm. If the police didn't put in these measures, it would have been worse than Ayawasu was working. I'm telling you, Ayawasu was working happened when the ruling government had clear a majority in parliament. I said not. We all know I said not and the dynamics involved. It is a swing constituency. And so anybody could win it. And so I'm telling you that in as much as the MP NDC knew they were going to win, the MPP also believed that they would snatch the seat. 
And you know, when it comes to security or when it comes to conflict and all this, these are some of the, the you know, the things you should be looking at. Uh, you know, what are the indicators? And the indicators pointed to pure violence if the police didn't put in measures. But they did. And so obviously you are not going to have a uh, 100% uh, you know, clear cut, no, no nothing. But there were some isolated issues in, uh, what do you call it, uh, I think, I think not. And so for me, I even spoke to some of the executives of the NPP while they were in Asin, and I told them that, you see, it is important that this country will unite. It is important that we don't see it as a do and die activity. We either win or when we don't win, okay. uh, we begin to castigate everybody. So for me, Roland, okay. I will say that the police have done what we haven't seen since 1992 in this two by election. But going into 2024, right. Roland. Okay. We need to be careful going into 2024. Mm. Thank you very much, Dr. Adam Bonan, for your great input. And I know that subsequently we'll try and touch base with you so that we can have a comprehensive election because um, it's just a year and then a little over five months, if not six months, to that election we'll be having on December 7, 2024. Now, um, Mr. J. Hyde, can you just conclude for me so that we'll quickly um, we want to wrap up? Our time is up. Yes, um, thank you once again. I, I would like to admonish the Domahini that, I mean, we love him, respect him, we think that he should continue leading the people of Doma and refrain from making such unfortunate comments. I mean, it is on record to have even said that he would even want to be a serial caller for the NDC and JM, which we are very much aware of. And I think that some of these comments is very unbecoming of a person who is leading people across the divide. We hope that, I mean, collectively, together with our chief teams institutions, Ghana will be at a better place. Thank you. Hello, sir. What about well, you, sir? I want to end on the note that uh, if we have to commend the head of the police council for the policing, then we should also commend him for the state of our economy currently because he's also the head of the economic management team. And that's Dr. Baumia. So when he comes and explains that one, we we'll commend him for the other. It has had nothing. The police situation is credit to the IGP. And I want that to be clear. If the IGP does something we are unhappy with, we will criticize him. That is what we, we are, it's our right to criticize people in government and those that are in charge. So if they do wrong things, and if they do right things, we must commend them for what has been done. Uh, and I think that the Domahini has spoken the voice of the people, which was transmitted and done exactly by the people of Asin North. Chachi questions matter, should be brought to an immediate end. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Isaac J. Hyde, um, thank you for passing through our studios this morning. And then also Director of International Relations for the NDC. Thank you for joining us as well, legal practitioner. And um, Alex Segbefia has been here. Let me just um, go through and read a couple of your messages. And I have this one from uh, Jerry. And, and um, well, I have Musa, Musa um, from Aswansi. Musa Abatwa says, the Attorney General wants us to understand that the perjury um, allegations before the, or the charge of perjury before the court is more important than the killing of innocent souls. How, why prosecute um, Jachi Kwesen on a daily basis while the late Edu uh, um, Dankwa or Dankwa Edu's case is still on your table for many years without any end result. I have this one from Kakri Samwa. Uh, it says, the Ochehini boldly said that critics of the Kufuadu are villagers and witches. They didn't want to criticize him as an MPP propagandist. Exactly. And that's from uh, like Kakri Samwa. I have this one from um, JJ Amadro um, says that um, Isaac J. Hyde should be careful with the way he describes traditional rulers. Was he not in this country when Justice Onyenuga was campaigning openly for the MPP in 2020? What is his take on that subject? And then um, we have this one also from. Um, Mr. Mante, he says, let um, Mr. J. Hyde explain the difference between what the president said 
and what the chief said. Well, uh, Mo Ajiman, that's Mohammed Ajiman, says uh, that good morning to your panelists. I think that um, our discourse should always be permeated with a, let, a lot of decorum and respect for each other. By so doing, we create unity among ourselves and then also help in the development of our democracy. Good morning to Mr. J. Hyde as well as Mr. Alessegbefia. Uh, Imelda Nassar, uh, Niboy Jefferson, Kofi um, Se, uh, Mani Ni Mani, uh, Jones Kobe, Enos, uh, James Enoch, as well as all of you on our stream. Alolo Mansa, thank you all. Ama Mark Gold, thank you all for your comments this morning. We appreciate them. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll bring you the latest in sports and then also have some great conversations right here for TV3 New Day. Stay with us.